EPS, big dips there for two very big transports company. Earlier in the week, we had JB Hunt out. They said that we're not at the end of the freight recession, but they're seeing signs of a rebound. What are you seeing? Are we in that freight recession? Or are we working out of it? Yeah, this one is just a really elongated freight recession. You know, normally we'd see a lot of bankruptcies of smaller carriers. You'd see that eventual rebound. You'd start to see pricing. This one, we had so much stored profits left over from that COVID rebound, that tightening we saw, that we're just seeing carriers stick around for longer. And that's, that's elongating this tail of this freight recession. So we're still in it. J.B. Hunt actually reversed their comments. Only a couple months ago, they said we're at the tail end. Now they're saying we're still in it. It just shows you how long this one is lasting. So I want to ask you about a, a macro factor on the transports. And by the way, to the audience, if you look on the bottom of your screen, on the left-hand side of the screen, if you're facing it, we're tracking the 10-year elevated rates. Are those part of the story here when it comes to transports and some of the pressure on them? Yeah, you know, absolutely. What you're talking about is something that you haven't seen for 40 years, the impact of inflation, high interest rates. All of that is impacting the consumer, and that's causing volumes to not be as strong. And when volumes are down, transports don't make anything. They just move it. And if nothing's moving, it's just, you know, extending this tail. All right. So looking at some, uh, uh, some stock movements right now, Night Swift, um, big day after its earnings report yesterday. Biggest trucking company in the U.S. Important to note that about 70 to 75 percent of everything we buy moves around the U.S. in truck. What did you make of that report in particular? Well, it, it was a surprise only because spot rates, uh, trucking is about 15 percent moves on spot rates. The rest moves on more contracted rates. But that's the incremental. That's where you can really see how things are moving. And those rates have absolutely been through the floor. They're normally about $1.65 per mile. We're at $1.25 per mile right now. So you can tell how weak the environment is. And so the expectation, and, and as you mentioned, earnings were way down. But they bought this other company, uh, U.S. Express. Okay. It's about 6,000 tractors about a third of the company, and you're seeing the benefits from that. One other question I want to talk to you about, intermodal. Uh, that's container shipping, largely consumer goods. Um, a lot of people think that's a read on what retailers think consumers are going to spend. However, we just had our big retail number today saying that more people are going to spend more money this year, uh, above 500 bucks than they did back in 2020. What are you hearing when it comes to intermodal volumes? Again, that's often computers, sneakers, things that people buy in stores as regular consumers. Yeah, J.B. Hunt just reported also, and they talked about intermodal after being negative for three quarters, inflected in the middle of, of uh, August and September. We're seeing that turn positive. We're seeing that, as you mentioned, the, the spot pricing start to come off the floor. So we're starting to see that come off the floor. It's not off to the races yet. We've just rebounded as our, just like our truck shipper survey. We're seeing a little bit move off that floor. It's getting a little bit better, but it's still pretty weak. Does that signal a soft holiday season? It's, so FedEx has already commented that we're, okay. we're kind of flattish year over year.